We all experience stress for many different reasons and at various times throughout our lives. Knitting can be a healthy distraction and provide moments of relaxation, even when there is turmoil going on all around you. But the project you choose matters. Some are better suited to stressful times than others. I'm Becca. I've been knitting for 26 years, and I've had a fair share of stress in my life. In fact, I thought that this t-shirt was so funny. <laughs> I wore it for you to give us a small giggle when we're talking about heavy things. I'm so sorry that you are stressed right now. I really hope that this video is helpful for you. A lot of times when you're under a lot of stress, there's this mental exhaustion and decision fatigue that comes along with it. And this can cause you to either overthink everything and not really want to make any decisions or just dive into things without thinking about it at all because you're already so overwhelmed. You just can't. Just me. I want to help you find a space somewhere in the middle and help you think beyond just your next knitting project. So close out your other tabs, um, go make some tea, grab a notebook and a pencil if that helps you focus, and then come back. Like I said before, stress can come in many forms. It might come up suddenly or you might know it's coming ahead of time. You might know when it will be over and you might not. The unknowns, at least for me, are especially hard. But aside from your circumstances, the real question is, what do you need right now? Do you need a quick win? This could be something like a small, simple plushie or a headband or a bulky scarf. Pretty much anything that would knit up quickly and with not too much effort. Do you need an escape or distraction? Something to divert your focus away from what's stressing you out and into another project. You might choose a more interesting stitch pattern, but something that's still not too complicated. Something that will require just enough of your attention, but not exhaust you. Do you just need something to channel your restless energy into? This could be literally anything that doesn't require you to look at a pattern. <laughs> Do you need some comfort? For me, this is something like a garter stitch or a stockinette worked in the round with just a really soft yarn in a beautiful color. And there is a little overlap in some of those, so don't feel like it has to be just one or the other. The next question to ask yourself is how much time do you have to knit and where will you be during that time? Do you have time before bed most evenings? Does it come in short, unpredictable segments like in the car and the school pickup line or waiting for a doctor's appointment? Will you be knitting during therapy sessions? Are you sitting by the bedside of a loved one who's in the hospital or on hospice care? Or maybe you're the one who's in the hospital and you're stuck in that bed with nothing else to do. It's important to think about how well your knitting project will fit into those situations especially if you need to be able to put it down and pick it up quickly without fear of losing all your stitches or forgetting where you were in the pattern. I've had a few projects that maybe weren't such a good fit for my life at the time. Mr. Badger here was a lot of fun and I do like the way he turned out, but while he was in progress, some pretty heavy stress entered my life and he honestly <laughs> he required 100% focus and constantly changing directions with all of the various pieces of his clothing and stuff and um, there were a lot of days that I just didn't work on him at all because I did not have the mental energy to put the thought into him that I needed to. This is perhaps the biggest downfall of being a monogamous knitter uh, because I probably should have just put him aside for a little while and done something simpler, but I don't like having two projects going at a time, so I didn't. Hannah Thiessen, the author of Slow Knitting, which I haven't read, but I 
do really want to now that I know about it, um, shared with me one of her experiences. I'm going to read it. My heart always says, make a sweater, but the reality is that I cannot make sweater pieces with shaping while stressed or inattentive. I have to use easily repeatable, memorizable patterns for this type of knitting. That said, sometimes the opposite can be better, burying myself in a knitting pattern that is a bit complex, with just some music in the background can help me focus away from the things stressing me out in everyday life. And then she showed me her struggle sweater, and obviously I can relate. This cardigan, as much as I love it, required a little bit more mental energy than I had, even though I wasn't particularly more stressed than usual at the time. So I would not recommend this if you are in a period of high stress. <laughs> When I was deciding on my sweater of the year for this year, I was fairly stressed, but I did have some decent chunks of time that I knew I would be able to knit. And so I was looking for a sweater that was mostly stockinette stitch, um, loose, flowy, and soft, something that I wouldn't have to fiddle with too much to make it fit my body the right way. And I was going to wear it for this video, but I accidentally dipped the sleeve in a green tea latte, and I haven't um, gotten it clean yet. I'll show you later. But I ended up going with the Scotty Sweater by Petite Knit, because it's all of those things. It's stockinette, it's soft, it's flowy, and I liked it because it has this cool plaid design, but it's knitted all in one solid color and then the stripes are added afterwards one at a time. So I knew that it would be really simple and I wouldn't have to constantly be changing colors. Sometimes when it was time to pay a little bit more attention, such as when doing short rows for the set in sleeves, I would go a few days without working on it until I could have the time and the focus to be able to do it the right way. And that's okay. You don't have to be knitting every spare moment. And in fact, if you find yourself getting stuck in the trap of feeling like you need to be knitting or doing something all of the time, you're only going to make yourself more stressed. So give yourself space and permission to sometimes just sit with your feelings and not do anything except for just focus on your breathing and where in your body you're feeling whatever emotion. It's even okay to just zone out and watch a movie. You don't have to be knitting all the time. So when choosing a project, a good place to start is looking through your yarn stash if you have one. Find a yarn in a color that you like that's not too bright or overstimulating. Something really soft feels nice to your hands as you're working with it, that alone will go a long way in making a project enjoyable. Then choose something with a stitch pattern that's easily memorizable. With the right yarn, garter stitch can actually be really lovely, and stockinette worked in the round is very soothing for me. These are things that you can do kind of thinklessly, just knit, 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 knit. You don't have to be constantly looking at your work to see what stitch you're doing next or how many or what row you're on. It's just the same thing every time and that can be very, very nice. The idea is to get going on a rhythmic, repetitive stitch pattern where you can let your mind wander without having to worry about losing your place in a pattern. If you want a little more stimulation, something like Fisherman's Rib or a Seed Stitch are both very beautiful and versatile and Still easy to remember because they have a short repeat. I would say that if you're in the mood for learning a new technique, to do it on something really low stakes. So don't cast on a whole sweater with a bunch of new techniques that you've never done before because I guarantee you, you're gonna get overwhelmed. It's okay to just make little swatches. If you wanna just learn a new stitch pattern, make a little square until you've got it down, cast it off and you can use it for a coaster, or put them in frames and hang them up around your house. The less tools required, the better. If you can grab it and go or pick it up at any time without having to worry about whether you have all of the things you need or where you want the pattern, you are on the right track. 
Stay away from things that require a lot of stitch markers, cable needles, constant measuring and counting of stitches in rows, and things of that nature. Embrace imperfection. I'm willing to bet that there are some things going on in your life right now that require more attention than they normally would. So rather than trying to control everything and make everything perfect, let some things go. Focus on the things that matter the most right now and give those the attention that they need and let other things fall to a lower standard maybe than you normally would. I mean, look at me. Today I'm sitting here on this hideous couch that my cat scratched up and I didn't fix my hair. The last video I uploaded I filmed in my closet without moving my desk and stuff all around to hide the fact that I'm in the middle of a bunch of clothes. And my hair was wet when I started recording. It's fine. It's fine. It doesn't have to be perfect all the time. And if you make a few mistakes in your knitting project, don't feel like you have to constantly frog it back and make it perfect. Just leave it alone. Let your knitting time be a break. So depending on your knitting experience and skill level, the thing you choose to knit will vary. If you're a beginner, just make a garter stitch scarf. Maybe don't even worry about it being a scarf, just start knitting. Even if you are a very experienced knitter, garter stitch can be wonderful. I think it was Alicia Plums that described garter stitch as a good palette cleanser between more complicated projects, which I thought was really true. If you do want a pattern to follow that's still really simple, I do have one such pattern available on my website and Ravelry. Ravelry. It's the Master of Scarves pattern and it's this scarf thing. It's worked in garter stitch, but it has a few simple increases and decreases all in a row that I think you'll be able to memorize pretty quickly. Whatever it is that you end up knitting, there's a strong likelihood that after it's done, it can serve as a reminder of the stressful time that you're in right now. And so I would caution you to be prepared for that. Um, if you are working on a hat by the side of someone that you love dearly who is very sick and they die, that hat may bring up a lot of those sad feelings of grief every time you touch it or look at it. You know, it might be better to pass it on to someone else who will enjoy it. In doing so, you can take something that was sad and use it to brighten someone else's day. And really, what's more beautiful than that? Things will get better. <laughs> In the meantime, I hope that you have a little bit more clarity now and that your next knitting project is a source of comfort for you. The last thing I will leave you with is the best advice I ever got <laughs> from a really good friend of mine when I was going through some really hard things. She said to me, remember, drink your water, eat your vegetables, and take your vitamins. <laughs> it makes a big difference.